I mean, you just, you absolutely trounced him. I mean, that was, that was a, 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 an impressive, impressive performance. Hello, this is Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. This is another edition of Faithful Fridays, Divided Devotions, and how I show very, very logically and clearly that you cannot trust Christianity and by Jesus' own words, we can reject that he was sent by the Father. Just read John 17, starting in verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father. So Jesus prayed that all Christians would be one, be unified. So we know right off the bat that Jesus' prayer was ignored. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. Well, the world has a right, in fact, an obligation to take Jesus at his word and believe that he wasn't sent by the Father. Just follow the simple logic there. Jesus prayed that the world may believe that, that you sent me, that God sent him by based on the unity. In 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me. Now that glory, what was it supposed to do? That they may be one. That as we are one, that's Jesus' own words. If you're, you know, if you take the gospel of John to be at least somewhat reliable. Verse 23, I in them and you and me, so that, so that they may be brought into complete unity. These are Jesus' own words, apparently. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved me even, and, and have loved them even as you have loved me. So, then the world will know that you sent me. Now, then refers to something. What does it refer to? The unity of Christians. Okay. In verse 20, it says, my prayer is not for them alone, meaning the people in the upper room that he's with, the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So the only way that you could remain a Christian and take Jesus at his word, that he's, that, that Jesus, that and that Jesus's prayer was answered is if you simply know true Scotsman, everybody out of Christianity, except for you and people that believe exactly like you. So this video, this Friday, we're looking, we're not, we're, I'm not going to go into the flowers and white debate, but that's the launching pad for this. So um, Warren McGrew, whose channel is Idol Killer, he did, uh, you know, so, sort of a commentary on this on this uh, Flowers White debate. Dr. Flowers, is it still true today that no one is able to come to Christ unless they're drawn by the Father? Now, the funny thing to me is both Warren and uh, Dr. Um, Flowers are former Calvinists. So both of them realized and they deconstructed that Calvinism is a very sick theology. Both of them recognize that. I'm a Calvinist and I'm telling him, like, hey, God's going to send only the elect babies to heaven like and who's to say every baby that dies half of them are he's god like i'm okay if, if none of them are elect you know like if he wants to send every baby who dies or every young adult who dies to hell like he's god like why are you even questioning this it's right for god to slaughter women and children anytime he pleases now i would like to ask either one of them um if you found out that Calvinism was true, just to say Jesus shows up and, you know, it's totally undeniable that it's Jesus and he does miracles and he proves to you he's Jesus and he says, oh, by the way, Calvinism is true. Would you reject it? Like, so for me as an atheist, people sometimes say, well, what if you found out Christianity was true? I would still reject it. Why? Because I hate the idea of exclusivity. I hate the idea that in Luke 19, 27, Jesus said, bring those unbelievers before me and slaughter them. Now, it's a parable about a king, but he's referring to himself. Bring the unbelievers before me and slaughter them. That's Jesus's plan. And you know, Christ, Orthodox Christian, Christianity is Jesus and God are one. Their plan is to either annihilate, depending on how you listen to, our slaughter, our torture for eternity, all those who don't believe. Well, how can I believe something that's unbelievable? So essentially, and ironically, maybe the Calvinists are right because I'm incapable of believing something I find to be nonsensical. I used to believe it. I have 38 years in, in as a Christian. When I deconstructed, deconstructed, I became an atheist. When 
Warren and Dr. Flowers deconstructed, they became something other than Calvinists. To believe one specific type of Christianity is the true one and that everybody else is deceived, you almost have to accept the Calvinist position. Do people have free will? It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it. it let me ask you this question. If people had free will, do you think James White is an idiot and just wants to sin? Since he's obviously not a real Christian, since he's a Calvinist and he believes bizarre, ugly things. Now, if Calvinism is true, that would make, in my opinion, and maybe you disagree with me, but that would make God to be mon monstrous, which is why people like Warren left Calvinism, because the logic is simple. If God made most people to go to hell specifically, like, and they don't have free will or a free choice because only the selected, the elected, the chosen few, which, by the way, turns out to be mostly white European Christians, most people of color are going to hell in this, in this plan. So if Calvinism is true, God is not only a sadistic monster, he's also a racist sadistic monster. So it's funny and it's sad that guys like uh, Warren didn't continue the path of deconstruction and just become agnostic atheists or agnostics or some type of universalist. They still stick to some type of thing is true, but it's obviously either A, not true at all, it's, uh, that's obvious, or, or there's some weird thing where God allows some people to know the truth. And again, I ask you, is James White stupid? I don't think James White's stupid. I think he's done what Christians do. He's latched onto a belief and he'll do anything he can to defend that belief because that belief in his mind is true. Well, that defines all of Christianity. You have decided it's true and you will do anything, any scripture twisting, any illogical leaps of faith and illogical conclusions, you will do this because you've already decided it's true. Dr. Flowers, is it still true today that no one is able to come to Christ unless they're drawn by the Father? Everyone must be drawn in order to come to Christ. Wow, thank the you. The drawing is the teaching. Thank you. Just like you say in your own book, you actually Seriously. ask the question, how does God draw them? By teaching them. I agreed with you on that point. He draws by teaching. And so you have to be taught, like Paul said, how will they believe in one whom they've not heard? They have to be taught. There has to be revelation. There has to be light. And so they have to be drawn by God. So why is it that no one has the ability to come to Christ? Don't we have free will? They don't have the ability to believe in one whom they've not been taught about. Just like I said, they have to be drawn by the teaching of God. So it's a matter of communicating uh, facts or data uh, to someone. Is that what the... Uh... If you want to call the gospel facts and data, okay. I mean, the gospel Ooh. is the power of God into salvation. It's the light. It's the sword of the spirit. It pierces in through not only bone and marrow, but into the heart, and it affects our lives. Just like, you know, you may say, the sticks okay. and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words have power. Okay, so a person who is drawn, again, looking at verse 44, a person who is drawn by the Father, by, by the father to the Son is being taught by God. Is that, is that is being taught the gospel by God the Father? Well, Hebrews 1 says, in days of past, God spoke through the prophets and other various means. But in these days, he speaks through his son. We are both men of action. Lies do not become us. We are men of action. Lies do not become us. People don't have the ability to believe things that they haven't been taught about, obviously. That, that's like, that's a tautology. The issue is people also don't have the ability to believe in things that are unbelievable, that are fantastic, that don't make sense. I don't believe in the Gospels because they are fiction. Now, if you say, no, you're wrong, well, okay, then you're, then you're basically agreeing with the Calvinists that I don't have free will. I am not stupid. I study the Bible more than most Christians. I was 38 years a Christian, a true believer. I prayed for people. I read my Bible. I tithed. 
I served in the church. I did. I had good works, in other words, fruit, that backed up my claims. I believed in the Nicene Creed. I believed in Jesus. Jesus was my Lord and Savior. I believed as much as anyone else. I prayed for people in the streets. I went on foreign missions. I dedicated my life to serving Christ. But when I studied things and when I critically thought about it, I realized it's a mythology. Now, I can't just believe because reason, reason, reason. Now, you could argue that God could come to me and change my heart, but then you are agreeing with the Calvinists that it's not free will, it's who God chooses. And if you disagree with the Calvinists and you say, well, you have free will, okay, well, my free will, my critical thinking facilities tell me that it's a myth. And if any of you Christians want to sit down and go through the reasons, I could convince you, if you're willing to be logical, that it makes no sense that Christianity is provably false. If you ask the Jews, they explain it to you as well. Christianity can't be true. It's provably false. So the only way you can believe in Christianity, because the story itself is nonsensical, contra it contradicts each other, and it's obvious fiction. If you believe it, it's because you believe on faith. Well, where did that faith come from? Where did the belief come from? If it didn't come from God, if it didn't come from your emotions and feelings, where did it come from? And how can you claim we have free will when two intelligent, smart people both look at the same, quote, data and one rejects it and one accepts it? How could you do that? It's the same argument between um, Dr. Flowers here and Dr. White. They both are smart men and they, and they both believe in Jesus and they're both claiming that they want to serve God to the best of their ability. And the furthermore, they both claim that they have the Holy Spirit guiding them. So we know from that as a matter, it's an axiomatic fact that people that claim that the Holy Spirit is guiding them, that some of them are deceived and wrong. We, that has to be true. So pick your side. Do you, do you go with flowers or do you go with white? Why? Is, is, is God telling you which one's right? Well, that's just an emotional feeling. And that's that's what gets you Mormonism or Pentecostalism or oneness Pentecostals or open theology or reform theology or becoming a Catholic. So obviously emotion doesn't isn't a good indicator. And, and claiming, this is what the Mormon boys say, I had a bosom a feeling in my bosom, a burning in my bosom. I know the Book of Mormon is true. So obviously, obviously that method doesn't work. So the other method has to be our mental facilities and logic and thinking. But where does that get us? It gets us two people with PhDs telling each other they're both going to hell because they're because the, the other guy's obviously wrong based on logic. So that doesn't get you anywhere either, does it? The only sane thing here, the only sane thing is either to reject it all because it's obvious that God does not want men to know about who he is or anybody, except for maybe a small select group. So that's option one. Believe that, believe that God is basically sadistic and, and, and cruel and, he, and that he wants most people to go to hell. That's the Calvinist position. And as John Piper says, God slaughters women and children as he wishes. And, and that's his prerogative. So you can believe that. Now, I don't, it's disgusting, but it is logical. You know, Dr. Dr. White's position isn't illogical. It's just disgusting. Now, if you reject that, then what are you saying? That you have the right church? Is that what you think, Warren? You have the right church? You were deceived before. You were deceived when you were a Calvinist, but now you're not deceived? What methodology did you use? Logic and reason? Does that mean you think you're smarter than James White? Do you think that you're, you have different access to different material than James White? Or is he just deceived by the devil? And then it goes back to, well, then Calvinism is true. Those that are deceived by Satan go to hell. And those that are enlightened, like you, Warren, those that are special that God chooses, you get to go to heaven. It's no different from your thing when you when you protested, oh, well, I don't believe God's just going to throw all these babies to hell. So you left Calvinism. It's the same thing. God is sending me to hell. Warren, don't you fucking care about me? 
or no, I'm just a worthless fucking piece of shit. See how disgusting your view still is, Warren? Your, your view is still disgusting because you believe, even though you disagree with the Calvinists, you believe God denies me what he's given you in that special revelation. And don't you dare say I'm a resistant believer. I nearly suicided leaving Christianity because it was so important to me and so special. And I believed it since I was a child. But I couldn't deny the facts. So either I have no free will or I've been deceived by the devil. And in my free will, I've chosen to, to side with Satan. And I'm going to be punished for that, for using my logical brain or being deceived by emotions. At the end of the day, Warren, you're no different than the Calvinist. Your position is, is no different at all. Most brown people are going to hell because they haven't been taught and they can't possibly know Christianity unless you claim God's saving all the Hindus and God's saving all the Muslims because they were raised as children in those belief systems. And if you and if you're become if you're going to become a universal a universalist, what's the point of all this? What's the point of these debates and all this arguing? It's a waste of resources. You could be feeding the hungry with this time, money and energy. You could be making the world a better place instead of arguing about ridiculous theology that people have been arguing about for decades and decades and centuries and centuries. If God is real, if the Christian God is real, he is a sadistic monster just for this reason alone. Why didn't he leave a very clear message? Why didn't Jesus leave a very clear message? If you're a Christian, you're either A, confused about what's true, or B, you're an arrogant fuck because you think you know the truth and the rest of us are idiots or deceived or both. It's an arrogant position and it's a racist and a bigoted position and it's disgusting. Wake up, people. Your religion is disgusting. Your religion is illogical. It's an illogical mess. And the proof of that is PhDs that study this stuff that go to seminary and universities don't agree. And you expect the rest of us, the normies, that we're supposed to pick the right one based on that? If we use logic and emotion, we end up Mormons or Pentecostals. So that can't be right. We can't use emotion and feeling. We can't trust praying to God because God tells the Mormon boys they're right. So we can't trust that method. We have to use intellect. And when you use intellect, who do you listen to? Bart Ehrman? Or no, is he an idiot? Is Bart Ehrman an idiot? Is James White an idiot? Come on. These people aren't idiots. They're coming to different conclusions, either A, because they're their brain and their facilities, their mental thoughts take them to that place. And if they have free will, that's what they're doing. They're choosing what makes, makes the most logical sense. And if they don't have free will, well, then why argue about any of this stuff? The Calvinists are right. And those of us that are going to hell deserve it because God chose to send us to hell. That's it. This stuff makes me angry and I'm done for the day. But if you're a Christian, you got to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what do you really believe? You believe you're special and everyone else on the planet, billions of people aren't special. That's a disgusting view. Stop. Welcome to humanity. Embrace secular humanism and forget this superstitious stuff that came out of the Stone Age and the Bronze Age and led to so much abuse. It's just, it's just unbelievably disgusting. All right, this is Michael Beverly. I'm done for the day. Like, subscribe, argue with me, troll me. I don't care. I try to answer most comments. I'm still a small channel. I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.